Hello, I am Andrea and today I want to talk about ECS. Acronym of Entity Component System, ECS is not a recent technology, it's taking place slowly but inexorably. It's designed to process a big amount of data compared to object-oriented and in parallel, almost automatically. Games like Overwatch or game engines like Unity, Baby, Amethyst, Wicked Engine are specifically designed with an ECS core. I am developing an ECS module for Godot with the aim to implement deeply as I need to not make it second to any engine already designed with ECS in mind. The module is called Godex, let's give it a check. My testing scene is composed by two types of elements, the breeze that runs around the center, random teleport nodes that teleport to a new random place each frame. There is a spawner that spawns the Godot scenes or the Godex entities. Both does the, the exact same thing, but in different ways, of course. Left side, Godot is running around 40 frames per second with 10,000 nodes, while Godex is running at 60 frames per second, which is running 1.5 times faster. Since the rendering is a bottleneck in this scene, the difference is not much, but if we compare the poor processing algorithm, things change. Just by removing the mesh instance on the Godot scene and the mesh component on the entity, we can suppress the rendering and so the bottleneck. Godot is able to handle around 220,000 nodes at 30 fps, while Godex is able to handle a million of entities, which is near to 5 times better at the same frame per second. ECS achieved this by grouping the data by type and not by object. When you compose a node in Godot using object-oriented, all the characteristics of the node are stored altogether. These nodes are then stored in the memory not continuously, and each frame the CPU jumps from one memory position to the other, executing always a different piece of code. On top of this, due to the object-oriented encapsulation mechanism, the node handles all its logic by itself, so it has to access other nodes' data. Just think about your get node in your code. For the CPU, this means access random position data. This overhead slows down the execution. With ECS, the data is grouped by type in separate storages. Differently from a node, an entity is just a bare element without a predefined behavior. The associated data, called components, are processed regardless of the meaning you give to such entity. So you can have a debris with both transform component and velocity component, but also a bullet or even a character with such components. At the same time, the minion has only the transform component. To process this data, we define a system where we specify the components we want to fetch. For example, the movement system needs to modify the transform component and the velocity component. The entities that have both are fetched and so moved. The advantage here is clear. The system code runs directly on all the components regardless of the entity final meaning, so with the same code we are moving three different things, the debris, the bullet and the character. The data is accessed directly, no extra overhead. But most important, at any given time, we always know the data we are accessing. This is what makes ECS a game changer, in my opinion. Since we always know which data a system is about to touch, we can execute any number of systems in parallel. These characteristics allow a gameplay system to be parallelized, while with object-oriented this is usually impossible or however really difficult to achieve, and at the same time not optimal. With ECS it's automatic and optimal. Returning back to the demo and by looking closely to the debris system and the random teleport system, it's possible to notice that those are operating on a different set of data so can run in parallel. It's fairly safe to assume that if run in parallel, the Godex demo could handle at least 1,500,000 entities. As I said, I won that Godex seems a good native module and the biggest challenge of my goal was make it usable in editor and with the Godot scripting. 
let's create some debris. First, we have to create the component. We do it by creating a script that extends the component resource. So we define the velocity variable. Now it's ready to be registered via this button. So the component is displayed on the entities add component dropdown. It's time to create our entity debris, create a new scene and add the entity node. This entity should have a 3D world location, right? So let's add the transform component. It should have a mesh, so let's add the mesh component. And it must move like a debris, so let's add the debris.gd we created. Notice, we can choose debris.gd from the add component menu because we registered it. No system is moving our entity yet, so it's add and stationary at center. To create the system similarly as we did for the component, we have to create the script that extends the system. The function prepare is called just once and it's used to initialize the system. We want to fetch the frame time data back, which is where the frame delta is stored, and then we want to fetch the transform component and the debris.gd component. The function for each instead is called for all the entities that have both the transform and the debris.gd component each frame. The code I have here accelerates the debris toward the center of the scene, making it oscillating around the center. The system is now ready to be registered as we did for the component. Now we can add it to the pipeline and move it to position 0. Make sure the pipeline is set as active and play the scene. The debris is no more stationary, rather it's oscillating around the center. Add the entity node to the world is not the only way to spawn it. If you have a lot of entities to spawn, a much smarter way to do it is using the API create entity from prefab. Basically, it creates a new entity by copying the one you provide. See here, I am passing the pre-initialized debris entity. Then I fetch the debris.gd component from this entity to set the random velocity and then the transform component to set the random position. Press F5. This is Wonder, a game I am doing with Godex. Unfortunately, when I started working on this game, Godex didn't exist, so many classes are handled by the Godot nodes. Check this. The function physics process of this class handles the camera and other things. This function is not emitted by Godot, but it's emitted by the Godex system called physics process. In this game, this system is set on the physics pipeline, which is processed with fixed delta time, as you can imagine. But nothing stopped me to move it on the main pipeline, so the function physics process is called with dynamic delta, like the process function. I could even remove the system called physics process, so the function physics process is no more executed. Of course, it's the same for the physics. I can decide how to process it and if process it at all. Notice that I can fully customize the engine depending on the game needs at editor time without touching a single line of engine code. While this level of customization could be supported even using object-oriented, the mechanism that allows such feature would blot the code, while with ECS it's just a matter of add or remove a system. The same principle applies to the game code you write. The more you add features to the game, the blot it becomes. Even with small games, it's easy to notice that the classes became more and more intertwined each other, resulting in a code which is difficult to maintain, and in some cases, it's even more convenient to rewrite with the new features in mind. With ECS, you code the game in small and really contained systems. The systems are never wired to each other, rather they transform the data. With the addition of more functionalities, the code base, instead to grow vertically, it grows horizontally and flat, keeping the code simpler and easy to maintain. Most of the time, add a new feature means just add a new system, or in the best cases, add a component to an entity, so using an already integrated system. See this, the bullet shot by this gun are entities. Let's say I want to change their behavior, so they bounce around like this ball. Nothing more easy than this. I just have to change the component to make it move like the ball. With object oriented, usually change the type of a node is not so easy, and you have to make sure all the features relying on the API of the previous type are still valid. 
The bullet shot by this gun travels from the muzzle to the first hit location. This is a multiplayer game. Look how convenient is the separation between data and functionality. On client, I want that the bullet shot by the gun, each frame, moves and performs the collision check to know when it hits something. On the server, instead, I want that only the position is updated. With ECS, all I need to do is compose two pipelines, each with different set of systems, one for the client and the other for the server, so I can load the one that I need. With object-oriented, I would have to build a mechanism to handle it blotting the code. ECS is not for everyone, of course. If you are at the beginning and you want to just learn how to create games, it's not important to know. Indeed, one of the biggest challenges of using ECS is know and understand it. Object-oriented is immediate, you don't need to think out of the box and you can put knowledge you use to stay in the world, use it to categorize the object around you, to create the game. While with ECS you need to think in a different way. While Godex works and the APIs are almost set, there are things missing, so my advice is don't use it. Unless you are someone that wants to look into a new technology or you even want to create a game to release and you are willing to help, as I'm doing in this case, welcome on board. The benefit of Godex, among the other engines, excluding Unity Dots, is that it's Godot-baked, so almost everything is already implemented, like editor or asset loading. That's it! Enjoy your Godocon!